Hey, what's the deal, YouTube? It's your girl, Miss Honey. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. It is your girl, Miss Honey, here with a, another video. This one is definitely going to be quick because I just took my passport photo, which is why there are no lashes, right? Can't wear lashes in your passport photo. Um, and I have to go pick it up uh, in about 40 minutes, so um, I won't be before you long. But I'm so glad to be back before you guys because this is actually a special video. You guys know it's Tuesday. Typically, I don't come in until... Uh, Thursday which I do um, a Handmaid's Tale and um, so this is kind of a special uh, special video um, you guys can look forward to more of these videos because this is a part of a new um, series yeah that I'm doing on my channel called Honey Roasted Headlines I thought that up myself yeah <laughs> honey roasted headlines where i talk about what is in the headlines um politically uh celebrity wise um as well as what's in the headlines on youtube right i'm in all three places at different times um of the week the month the day the hour whatever so today we're going to be talking about this whole debacle with a rather large YouTuber who is all about the tea. She does celebrity gossip. Um, she does uh, reviews or recaps. I guess you can call that or discussions. I don't know if I would call it a review because she doesn't really review the shows like typical YouTubers do, which they just tell you everything that happened and their opinions on it. Um, and she doesn't recap because recaps are kind of short and to the point, right? It's more of discussions, right? Um, but she's fairly large here. She's fairly large on Instagram. I think she has a huge Twitter following. Like she's built up a pretty um, significant brand for herself. Um, well, all hell broke loose on her YouTube channel as it pertains to her panel. Uh, I'd love to know down below from you guys uh, how many of you guys have seen her either on IG, Twitter, or on uh, YouTube. Hopefully you guys cannot hear my fan in the background. I have to have it, um, especially when I'm wearing the UUUU unit <laughs> um, because I get hot, right? Human, go figure. Anyway... Let me know if you guys watch her channel, if you followed her, if you just even know a little bit about her, or if you've been seeing all of this commentary pop up um, in your feed about all about the tea. Um, so I thought I'd come in because I actually have followed her for quite some time. And um, I also follow another YouTuber who's actually huge um, as well. Um, she, she has a really huge following on YouTube. I'm not sure about the gram. I know she's on the gram. Um, and I'm not sure about Twitter. But I know for sure um, she's big on YouTube. And that's Sherelle's World. I followed Sherelle's World first. Um, because she would come in and talk about um, reality TV shows as well. Uh, I only watch certain reality TV shows even when I stopped watching and stopped reviewing them all together I would go by there and just see what was going on even though I wasn't watching the shows anymore right just you know background noise that type of thing so it was Sherelle's world that <clears throat> initially started this whole panel thing right Sherelle uh, was by herself for a long time and I really loved her when she was by herself and then it came to her. I don't know if, you know, it came to her from watching other people. I'm not sure. But the first time I saw, you know, panels 
and more than one person discussing the sub a subject matter um, on a really large platform like that was Sherelle's world, you know. So, um, I really liked her when she was by herself. And so she started doing this panel and her panel was various people. Uh, I can't remember initially who all of the panelists were. Um, they were pretty consistent though. Uh, I think she for sure had this guy named John, John, oh my gosh, I can't believe I forgot his name. Anyway, his, his first name is John, um, and then she had this guy named Perry who turned out to be her husband. John exposed that. She kind of fell out with her panel. She didn't fall out with Perry because he lived in the house with her. It turns out he was her husband, but John is the person that um, exposed the fact that Perry was her husband. Okay, so this is the initial fallout of panels. I'm just taking you down this road, right? And then we're going to talk about it. So um, I used to like her a lot. And then she had this guy on there who uh, talked with, uh, you know, kind of a, um, uh, I, don't, I don't think he had a British accent, but I think he, his family lived in, in London, Britain, England, whatever at the time and when she fell out with this john guy um it was a, that was a mess that all played out online and i was shocked and at the time i was like team sherelle because i was like oh my gosh she just totally exposed her and perry which i knew something was up with her and perry because he was the only one that was on there every day and he would be like first and she'd be like let me get perry on the line um, but I think she used Perry to fill out her panel. And I definitely think that Perry at the time was just starting to build his panel and, and you know, build his YouTube channel, which rightfully so he should have because Sherelle was killing the game, killing the game. Okay. When it comes to celebrity review pa panel reviews, she was killing the game, right? Um, I'm going to find this John guy's name. Um, anyway, so John and his partner exposed John Yates. John Yates and his partner, they was kind of on some other type of thing. They was kind of like, um, they had some, some issues of their own where they were, you know, um, seemingly and allegedly kind of inebriated or under some type of influence online it was a big mess now mind you they don't just follow like real housewives of potomac gossip and um you know bravo stuff they was doing like 90 day fiance they was doing love after lockup and and people are serious about them two shows i personally don't watch them i watch them i think they're a little low brow for me um, to me, 90 Day Fiance and Love After Lockup is so Jerry Springer, right? But people love it, um, especially middle class America. So both of them had huge followings, although Sherelle's was bigger. So um, she would come on and do the shows um, the day after. And something happened where Perry offended John and John... Um, it was slick him and his partner they were talking to them on the phone she called him up about some gossip she, you know she had this other guy i can't even think of his name now which i'm not gonna say his name because i'm gonna tell you why this this guy that was in london or england or whatever california i don't know he was a, he was a young white guy and um he was supposed to be like upper echelon oh andrew that's what his name i'm not gonna tell you his whole name but his name was andrew and they was calling him Rich Andrew. Anyway, he had dropped some tea to her and she had called John on the phone, her and Perry, while they was online to discuss this hot tea. This was after the panel, right? So her and Perry side by side, like they in different houses, but he just down in his office and she just in her office. It was a whole thing. <laughs> and that's when um, he kind of exposed that 
not only was those not Perry's teeth, but that Perry and Sherelle was married. It took them a minute, you know, for them to catch on that they was being, they was being shady, but he was kind of pissed off with something that Perry had said about same sex, same gender loving people. It was a whole thing. So then, um, John goes back on his channel it's all playing out. Like it, everybody's involved. The whole 90 day fiance crowd is involved. All of those bloggers were involved as well as, um, Sherelle, all her people that follow her, they was involved and they was like attacking on Twitter, on Instagram and on, uh, YouTube. And, uh, John at the time, like I said, they was, you know, they had something going on. Him and his, his partner had something going on. They just wasn't, um, living 100% in reality. Anyway, um, Sherelle goes over to his channel because she's trying to get some clarification as to what's going on, but it's all playing out online. And when she goes over there, he's got on his panel. Um, now while Sherelle was doing her panels and she was trying out people, she at one time had all about T, all about the T whose name is Monica. That's all we know. Um, Monica, she, Monica's always behind an avatar. Sherelle had her on her show. Um, just her, Sherelle and Monica and Monica was bringing Sherelle some tea about some reality show that this, that, or the other. Fast forward, her and John fell out. John goes back to his channel and he's talking and he's got a little bit of a panel going on. It's three people, including himself. One of those people is Sherelle is, is, uh, Monica, all about the tea. And so Sherelle pops in and so does Perry pop in. So now you got Monica, all about the tea. You got John, whose channel it is, he's hosting. You got some other person, I don't know who. You got Sherelle and you got Perry. So four people for sure is on this panel and some arbitrary person that I don't remember because they was dead silent through the whole thing. And so when Sherelle comes on, she's like, John, what's going on? Like, why are you doing this? Like, what's your problem? Why are you upset? Just explain it to me so we can work through this. I, I want us to work through this. I consider you to be like friends or family, that type of thing. And, um, you know, we talk on the phone. All you had to do was text me, yada, yada, yada. And John, again, at this time, he wasn't really himself so he was like Ubering and Uber Eats and doing uh, all night lives. Him and his partner was up all night long doing they talking on 90 Day Fiance stuff. And he was always in the chat. Like he had some other little things going on where he was just frayed at the edges. And so he really wasn't in no shape for her to be trying to talk to him, um, which I think she originally officially found out. And so she was asking him and he was having a hard time explaining it. One, because he stays looking at the chat and, and combating with the people in the chat. And two, because he was, you know, under some type of influence. I don't know if it was sleep or what, but you know. And Monica chimes in and Sherelle tells her that she's not talking to her to mind her business. Okay. And Sherelle and Monica's like, hold up, wait a minute, yada, yada, yada. And she got to it with her. Like, I think you're just making this bad. And I think how he feels is that it, no one knew that Perry was your husband. And you could have at least told him if he had known, you know, she just really jumped in when she probably should have clicked off. So it went on from there where Sherelle and her husband, Perry, was doing lives like back to back. Like he got his channel, she got her channel and they was doing lives back to back. And they, we talking about thousands upon thousands of people in each one of them chats. Like they was making a killing. John too, John too was making a killing off of this. So, um, uh, you know, we never did see Monica back on Sherelle's channel. Sherelle built her channel, continued to build her channel. And she had this rich Andrew on. Well, at the same time, now she's suing John. John suing her, saying Perry threatened him. It was a whole mess, and they got lawyers involved and all of this stuff. It comes out that Rich Andrew was actually an underage teenage boy <laughs> that she was talking to every day about, you know, celebrity. I mean, she was so enamored with him. 
Um, it was, it was, they still don't talk about it. It's still taboo. It should have been way more blown up. If it was Monica, it probably would have been way blown. But this was early on when panels and stuff was just getting popular. And, um, turns out the boy was underage, child. And so they really couldn't drag him. They really couldn't ever add his photo again, his picture again, or talk about it. They couldn't take no phone calls from him. They couldn't even resolve that and make a coin off of that struggle. And then, of course, um, that kind of died down. And I just didn't really watch Sherelle anymore after that. I was just like, it's, it's, it's a whole debacle. It's the whole thing. I didn't like all that back and forth. Like, we never got any new content. It was always about this John situation. Even though I think Sherelle wanted to move on, by that time, you know, the bad taste was in my mouth. Well, I started watching Monica. I I, I did fault Monica for getting herself involved in that. Um, John Yates is a Caucasian man. And uh, Sherelle considered her, I mean, uh, Monica considered herself really good friends. They all just kind of in pseudo competition. And he gets in where he fits in. He's he's nowhere near as big as either one of them. He's big in the 90 Day Fiance world. He's got a huge IG following. But in terms of YouTube, celebrity gossip, celebrity news, reality TV news, he can't touch Monica or Sherelle. But he was good friends with Monica and good friends with Sherelle. So when he fell out, Sherelle, Monica fell out with Sherelle, Monica jumped in it. Anyway, she quickly got up out of that because of the whole Rich Andrew thing. And it was very, very clear with several videos after that and police showing up on John's lives and stuff like that. And she didn't want no part of that. So she does a daytime panel, right? A daytime panel is full of professional people. Um, DJ Richie Sky, who he has his own channel on YouTube, and he has a pretty big platform. He's pretty big in in the communications and journalism world, period. But coming to YouTube and having his own platform, he was interviewing um, uh, some of the celebrity reality TV celebrities. And so it was a feather in her cap for her to have him. Uh, this guy named Amir, who lives in California, and um, another guy named Andrew, and he's got a huge platform now, and um, I don't know if his name was Adam. His name was Adam, right? He's got a platform now called Up and Adam. He actually is the one that procured the interview with Fallon right and all of the housewives call him when they want to do interviews and stuff like that like he did a really really good job he was also on Sherelle's panel um so Monica kind of procured some of Sherelle's panelists right Adam would come on eventually Adam wanted to focus on his stuff and he kind of dropped off she'd also have another girl on there whose name I think was Monique she was a writer and a dating like specialist um she lived in California very bubbly very bright very professional um Amir very professional he knew a lot of celebrity stuff their assistants and all that stuff so she had people on her panel that could really speak to all of the celebrity gossip this was during the daytime and it was very professional um I had called in to her show a couple of times when Real Housewives of Potomac was on last year and so um and Real Housewives of Beverly Hills and she thought I was funny and all of that and she was like come back next week come back next week when we do the show I'd love to have you on at that time I didn't realize she was building a nighttime panel I didn't go back on because you guys know I have a lot of personal responsibility so it's hard for me to keep a social media schedule that's another reason why I don't mod for a lot of people even though I might be listening to lives and chats and stuff like that. I, I can't do a lot of chatting. I can't mod because I can't make sure I'm at on your channel every day at 7 o'clock. Because I don't know, you know, if I'm going to be pulled in another direction personally. So, um, yeah, I just never did go back. And I think about that now that everything is kind of blowing up. <clears throat> But um, fast forward, she had her daytime panel, which I went out there and I looked to see when the last time she did her daytime panel. And it's been a long time. 
Okay, Monica is at the top of her game. She also procured an interview with Monique Samuels from Real Housewives of Potomac. And this was the day after um, the last reunion where she um, announced she would no longer be back. So she was one of the first people to do like an interview right after that. Um, with her and she did it on her panel um, but I, I realize now her daytime panel those people I haven't seen those people in a long time Amir who I loved um, John stopped being on there right after he fell out with Sherelle and Monica decided to wipe her hands of him really she's not had him on her panel professionally in a long time and he says it is because she does Bravo shows and he does other shows but <laughs> Okay, it's money to be made, and uh, everybody knows it. Okay, so um, so she built a nighttime panel. And when she built the nighttime panel, I didn't see the, the daytime panel anymore. But again, these people were kind of professional. The last person she had on there uh, as a panelist for the daytime was Buffy Purcell, who was on Married to Medicine last season. And uh, I thought, okay, well, she's really doing the doggone thing. But then the daytime panel disappeared. Buffy went back to IG, and she's got a successful YouTube channel where she talks about finance and um, financial preparedness and that type of stuff. It's a really good channel. So you guys check her out, Buffy Purcell. Um, DJ Richie's blowing up. Um, he was pulling away from that, too. Again, the panels are a routine. And at the time, she was doing them like um two to three days a week and they were benefiting from it i think they were kind of splitting the super chats or whatever um they were putting their cash apps up there so people could cash app them they were weighing in um i think the monique lady was cool i think buffy was cool i think amir was cool i think um dj richie started to get a lot of following and before you know it we didn't see dj richie on there anymore really the panel just disappeared if you go back and look for her daytime panel you, you'll see it was months ago months and months ago that she had this daytime panel but she was building slowly but surely a a evening panel and that evening panel was a schoolboy, which is i think i think he was born a female and is the same gender loving individual right um, but he goes by schoolboy, and I think he prefers the he pronoun, adjective, whatever. Um, and uh, one day we saw Bishop come up and just pop in and, you know, do some conversation. All of these people were popping in on her daytime panel. And so she kind of locked in on these people, I guess, and then went back and asked them to do a nighttime panel, which at the time, some of them had channels, small channels, um, or they had channels they weren't doing anything with. They were great. They were glad to do it. I mean, she had this huge daytime panel, and now they're going to be a part of her nighttime panel. Um, and these are all people who would, would pop in on the daytime panel, Bishop, uh, Schoolboy, um, uh, uh, Plez, um, who's an attorney. Bishop, I think, is an ordained minister, but he's also a gamer and a techie, and he's just a well-rounded individual. He's from the Carolinas, so you know what I'm saying? He's a good southern man, salt to the earth. Um, and, you know, it would be the three of them and Monica, and it wasn't bad. It was it was pretty good. I think that panel that she built was pretty good. Both Plez and and uh, Bishop were very even keel, very consistent, uh, very well rounded. Plez uh, was a little older. She's gone to law school. She's got a bevy of experiences, and so she brought that type of balance. And then Bishop is very even keeled. He's a very consistent individual. He's got pretty high standards. He, he, like I said, very consistent. He rarely ever deviated from those high standards. But he liked to have fun and a good time. He wasn't a stick in the mud. And he wore these huge, big brim hats. Kind of like Smokey the Bear. Um, but he would have like red and white and yellow. Like people really like Bishop, right? 
and the ladies liked him you know the, he's a heterosexual male on youtube so he was getting plenty of you know play um and then schoolboy was very physically expressive you know she would be like you know <laughs> so people kind of like that um and they all had their own personality uh schoolboy really she wasn't one to jump in or to interrupt and i felt like a lot of times when when the other panelists talked she would just come in and agree and um you know sometimes she would have little quips and stuff it would be kind of quirky kind of corny uh, but it would be in line with everyone else with what everyone else was saying so it was fine um so soon um i stopped watching for a while things got really really busy and um they were coming on every day every night it would be like an hour hour and a half hour and 45 minutes then it would be like two hours 215 i just can't sit and and listen attentively that long and once you mop your floors and clean up and tidy up and do the laundry to podcasts and lives and stuff then you move to other rooms you got to charge your phone you got to run out you you got to run into the store like you just don't have time to just sit there and dedicate an hour and a half two hours almost to a live and they really just start looping after a while you know talking about the same thing over and over again she would have topics but if it was a hot topic they would talk about that for a good hour right and she would go person by person and she would say, what do you think? What are your thoughts? Thoughts? Yeah, what are your thoughts on that? What are your thoughts, right? And so, um, yeah, I just kind of dropped off. I come back on one day and just checking them out. I had nothing to do. And, uh, and uh, I saw that Marcel was on there. I didn't really know a lot about Marcel. I thought, I just assumed she was someone else that had called in and someone else that, you know, that Monica brought in. Um, I soon learned that Monica, I mean, uh, um, uh, Marcel was, um, a huge supporter of Monica's and a huge supporter financially, right? She gave a lot of cash apps. She gave a lot of cash apps to the other panelists when they started their channels. Um, you know, she did a lot of super chats, you know, that type of stuff, um, what do you call it when you buy buy the little buy the little whatever you buy these little you know these little memes that dance in the super chat you pay five dollars for a little dancing head you know that type of thing avocado whatever um she would buy a lot of that stuff memberships that type of stuff um but i noticed that she was a little crass you know what i mean she was like uh um, you know what I'm saying? Like your smoking auntie, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> she was a little crash. She was a little off color, you know. Uh, she didn't have a lot to say. She stood there and smiled a lot. And she, if Monica would say, make sure you hit that like button, she would be right there, you know, thumbs in it up. And, um, I noticed the moment that she came on, Marcella came on, um, it was okay for a little while and then i noticed that the dynamics kind of changed the energy shifted a little bit right uh i just made a note of it and moved on again i was in and out sporadic so um i saw one of the what do you call it thumbnails where they were going to be talking about apple watts i don't really know apple watts so but it was something to do i may have been cleaning greens or something or folding clothes so it was something to watch and typically i look for long lives so if if my hands are going to be occupied so i don't have to keep going to the next thing i'm on my phone right going to the next video i, I can't be searching and i'm i'm washing collard greens right and so um i picked something that's like an hour and a half something to get me through the task and um this apple watts came up i was like okay well i'll watch this and uh the apple watts things what was hard 
it was one thing for them to be showing the video of her being seemingly drunk. It was another thing altogether for Monica, the avatar, all about the tea, the owner of the channel, to call that girl up on her cell phone. And when she called that girl up on her cell phone, it was difficult. It was difficult. The girl started crying. This Apple Watts started crying. And you could tell that Plez and Bishop especially were super, super uncomfortable. Initially, when they talked about the initial video where she looked like she was under some sort of influence, um, Monica kind of went hard on Apple Watts. Plez was like, you know, um, if anybody has any, um, you know, codependencies or dependencies on substances it's a very difficult thing to get over and it's my prayers go up for her bishop was kind of the same way um again schoolboy always kind of like follows the lead of everyone else she's not really or he's not really a person that likes to stand out in terms of having their own opinion to me schoolboy didn't have a lot of depth i thought i never thought that he was in his 30s. I thought he was early 20s, you know, just from behavior and demeanor and stuff. And then Marcella was kind of the same way. When she would weigh in, she would either be crass or rude, not rude, just kind of crass, you know what I'm saying, like unpolished. She didn't have a lot to put in on it. Um, but when they called, when Monica called Apple Watts on the phone and she was you know, pushing this girl to admit that she was on these drugs. I was like, I'm out. <laughs> I'm out. Like, I just couldn't get with it. The lives was getting longer. They was on every night. The dynamics had kind of changed. And it was apparent to me that you could see that people were tired. Like, you could see physically, schoolboy, Marcella, all of them, you could see that they were tired. They were on just about every night. If they wasn't on five nights a week, they was on at least four. This after work in their day jobs, right? Um, and, you know, she would go one by one. She would always call on players first and then um, schoolboy and then Bishop and then Marcella. And uh, the Apple Watch thing just changed. Like, I started to see, um, you know, players would speak and then everybody else would speak and she would move to the next topic or she would move to a next point within a topic. And she would say, play as your thoughts. And players would be like, yeah, I don't know. I just feel like, you know, anytime you have, I, you could just tell that she was doing a lot to fill the time. And Monica wouldn't be, she would weigh in a lot, um, but then there would be times where she would let them do the talking, and you could tell she was looking at all of the, she was manning the chat, or she would say, uh-huh, 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 yeah, absolutely. It's one of those things that people do when you can tell when they're reading, you do it to your children to act like you're paying attention when you really not. Uh-huh, 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 yeah, absolutely, yeah, um, oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely, 100%. Um, schoolboy, your thoughts? Anyway, um, but you can just tell players was just like, I, why are you calling on me again? Like, let someone else talk, right? Um, I, I started to see all of this, right? Anyway, um, long story, long story long, uh, the other day, um, I saw where Plez had left the panel. And apparently, uh, Plez is a lawyer by trade. Uh, she's an attorney. And so I got to see on, uh, first I saw a guy who's a recurring guest. Uh, so Debonair was a recurring guest. He wasn't a panelist. He was a guest. Apparently, he had been on and they was one of them all night panels. And he had been drinking a little bit, and out of the kindness of his heart, he was out of order. He big upped Plez and just told her, God has big things for you, and your light will shine brightly. Your light shines brightly. You're going to do great things, yada, yada, yada. Um, some of the other panelists didn't like that. I saw him when he, I, this is how I knew what was going on, was because so damn near, had a, a video and his thumbnail said why I'm not on all about the tea anymore and so 
when I saw his video, I was like, oh, let me go back and see what happened. So I go and find Pledge's video and I see where Pledge is explaining how she left. And she's talking about on, on um, May 17th, she called Monica, um, texted her, called her, I think it was a phone call, and told her that she wasn't going to be able to come back on the panel. She was going to give her two weeks notice because... Um, of time constraints she's going back into the office and it's every night and she's not going to the gym she really just needs to work on um more of a balance within her own life especially going back into the office so she said time constraints and she showed the receipts and all of that stuff she said june comes around and she's done her two weeks but she notices that monica has not announced to the other panelists that she's not going to be on anymore and so uh, this was a Sunday. I think Monday was going to be that Sunday was her last day. They did a panel. Pledge was on it. It was fine. She told Pledge she was going to call her later. She never did. So that Monday, Pledge dropped a video announcing that she wouldn't be on. Um, when On the 17th, when she told Monica that she was going to give her her two weeks notice, Monica was like, oh, well, I'm sorry to hear that. Um, would you consider doing Fridays? And Pledge says, well, maybe I could work Fridays in, but what would be the financial compensation for that? This is all out there on Pledge's video. I think um, Scared of Beautiful is her name of her channel, so check her out. Um, and you can find The Bishop and Schoolboy is S-K-O-O-L-B-O-I, I believe. Uh, I don't think Marcella has a channel. But anyway, check them out. Check them out. It's all out there. Um, and uh, so she never she never heard back from Monica about the financial compensation for they were all getting financial compensation for being on the panel as a whole. Uh, it turns out that Pledge was getting three hundred while the other a month while the other panelists were getting two hundred a month. I don't know how much Marcella was getting, but I'm assuming she was. So for Monica to have a panel where she's paying um, two, four, six, and then um, pledge she was playing, paying uh, 300, that's $900. She's, how much she's gotta be pulling in to give $900 a month away to pay these people $900. Now, she also, they opened their channels up. They they did get some subscribers because she let them promote their channels on there. So there's exposure too. So they were getting some type of monetary gain from that portion too. But physically cash apping um, $900 to your panelists every month. So you just know, you just think about how much she had to be making from YouTube um, and, and, and other residuals that she could give them $900 a month. Plus, she was cash apping the money, you know, like for their birthday, she said she sent Pledge $250 for her birthday. I don't think she sent them all that, but she definitely confirmed that she sent Pledge that. But Pledge has got a legal mind. She was evil even really even kill, very balanced person, and everybody liked her, you know. She would always call on Pledge first. Um, it was important that players be there. Um, you know, the numbers were different when players wasn't there. It wasn't significant, but you can tell the panel ran a little bit differently when players wasn't there. Because I think a lot of them took their cue from players, with the exception of Bishop. Bishop always had his own mindset and opinions on things. Um, but also Bishop, Bishop being a male heterosexual male he wasn't as into some of the topics as let's say a gay male would be just saying anyway um so she announces that she's leaving and monica's pissed so monica then does a panel and on that panel uh she says pledge isn't coming back and she alludes to the fact that it may be because of mental health issues and all of them, with the exception of Bishop, who decided to get off camera and put his avatar up, kind of kind of had something to say about Pledge. Well, Pledge called into the show and said, I want to come on and defend myself. So she comes on. It's this big whole thing. It's out there. 
Oh, this over talking, all of that. Like I said, Bishop was so uncomfortable, he got off the panel. Um, Schoolboy and Monica are very close. From what I understand, Schoolboy calls Monica his mom, her mom. Yeah, his mommy. Um, mind you, no one's ever seen Monica. She's an avatar. And this is how I look at those avatars. Those avatars are kind of like, y'all remember Charlie from Charlie's Angels? <laughs> they spent a lot of time trying to figure out who Charlie was, trying to see Charlie's face and all that stuff. Um, it's kind of like talking to the man in the well. Like you never seen the man in the well, but you go by there and talk to him every day and he give you instructions. You know what I'm saying? Like it's something about seeing someone seeing someone's face and feeling their energy that's the thing is that you can kind of judge tone from behind an avatar but you can't judge body language and if you're anything like me i look at the full scope of an individual that's why when i kept seeing players fold her arms a lot i realized okay here's a person that's getting fed up right i can tell by the energy i could tell by bishop constantly looking at his computer and his phone um, he looked like he was looking at the chat, but he was doing other stuff during the panel. That I could tell it. I could tell. Same thing with schoolboy. Um, and Marcella was always just like, you know. <laughs> um, so body language goes a long way. But uh, to me, it would be harder to connect with someone uh, in their an avatar, you know. I follow some people, Olivia the Oracle, uh, she's an avatar, I enjoy her platform. Um, she can be fun and ratchet, but she's also well-rounded and she's culturally sound in a lot of ways. I like her. Uh, she's an older woman. She does the avatar a lot, but she used to have another channel um, and she always showed her face. So I know what she looks like. I know what she gives. Um, Seven Stars is another one that always does an avatar now, but you know, if you've been on YouTube for any amount of time, like pre-beef sector when the beef sector just got started seven stars was always on she was um kind of friends with tasha k a little bit that's how i know who she is that type of thing so there's some people out there that are avatars but you've at least seen them at some point before we've never seen monica so it's weird that someone would call them mommy uh it's odd but she's pretty dedicated to monica she goes out on her channel schoolboy and she unloads on Plez. And then when Plez comes into this panel to explain herself, uh, schoolboy is like, I apologize. I should have never inserted myself, yada, 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 yada. But the cat was out the bag. She made it seem like she was upset with Plez because Plez never told her she was leaving the panel, yada, yada, yada. Monica was like, Plez, you could have called me. The reason I didn't call you, even though I told you I was going to call you about the money, she she wouldn't go to that. But she said, when I told you that Sunday I was going to call you, and I didn't call you, you should have called me before you go out there and make that announcement to everybody without me and uh, without telling me and uh, woo the woo the woo And Plez was like, I waited on you. I gave you two weeks. You still never said anything. And then they were like, oh, you promised to do Friday. She was like, no, I told you I would consider doing Fridays depending on the compensation. You never got back with me about the compensation. And then Monica went to screaming and yelling and over talking her. It's a whole thing. It, it doesn't make a difference, right? Like it's, it's a moot point, right? Um, because if, you, if your intentions are pure, if your intentions are pure, you would have called Plez back. When Plez gave you her two weeks notice, uh, I could see it taking you, you being kind of taken aback because you're losing a very popular panelist, uh, which is probably why she offered her Fridays. But again, like Plez was saying, it would, would have been every Friday of her year. Every Friday, she would have been, been expected to give up her Friday to be on a panel. I couldn't have done it. I, your girl, could not have done it. Just saying. So, um, yeah. Um, so it, it was yelling, it was screaming. Again, it's all, it's a, from Monica. Plus held it in the road. Bishop is now an avatar. <laughs> uh, 
schoolboys crying or fake crying or whatever, Marcella's like, I cashed up you. I cashed up you. I used to give you super chats. They were just, you know. Uh, and players was just caught between a rock and a hard place. I mean, it was no winning. When you follow protocol and do things fairly and you do things decency in decency and order, um, how people respond really depends on where they are and who they are as people, you know, who they are morally, ethically, character wise, right? Character wise, when that girl gave you her two weeks notice and you said, I'll call you back. Let me think about the pay. Um, you could have texted her and said, I don't think I can pay you anymore. Um, or this is all I could do for Fridays, even though I'm giving you more than everyone else. Um, a hundred dollars more than everyone else. That was for being there all week and three, two uh, hour and a half, two and a half hour lives. Now, if you wanted to pay her a little bit less on Fridays, you could offer her that and then heard her response. You could have did all that by text. You say nothing. You say nothing. You did go behind her back and talk with with schoolboy about it who then went on her channel and lied and said she didn't know and why didn't players tell her that was the first time she had found out and in the same live she said she already knew that players left because monica had told her the avatar so um it was just it was like defame players and players was upset about it she was upset about it because like again like i said she did things in decency and in order but um, it wasn't reciprocated. So, um, Plez then went back on her live and she kind of just cleared up all the points she couldn't really make because she was being over talked and overshadowed and, and diminished and dismissed on Monica's channel. It made Monica look really, really bad because she was also saying when she told her she would call her back that Sunday after Plez's last official live. Um, this was the beginning of June. Oh, I'll call you. I'll call you later on tonight to just let you know. And when players didn't hear from her, that's when she went on her channel and said, I'm leaving and this is why. And I wish everyone the best, yada, yada, yada. And Monica said it was because I, 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 I have a life and I was with my kids in an amusement park and I had been yelling and screaming all day. You had, you just done a live. Um, that's not true. That's not true. That's not what it was. She didn't do, they didn't just do a live. She canceled the live for that Monday. That's what it was. They did one, I think that Sunday. Um, and then the one for Monday, she canceled it. And that's why players went live and, and announced that she was leaving. But she was saying that she was hoarse and it was up to players. Players could have called her when she didn't call players. Players could have called her. This is why I say it's a moot point. If your intentions are pure, you call these people your family, which is, whatever i mean people that's just stuff people say um uh you call these people your family you would have called her and said hey girl i can't see paying you i think what i'm gonna do is just try to find another panelist i wish you all the best honestly and let's announce it together and maybe do like a send-off type of live that type of thing she could have did all of that but she didn't do all of that she let it play out like players was snaking and backstabbing the other panelists and keeping them in the dark. But all players was doing was giving two weeks notice and letting Monica take the lead. And Monica took the lead in a very manipulative way. And that's what happened. It doesn't matter if you were hoarse, it, 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 if it was Friday and it was raining and the dog ate your homework, none of that matters. How you conducted yourself when that girl told you the two weeks and you didn't honor the fact that you were going to call her back and get back to her, you told her a second time that you won't call her and didn't honor that and call her back and get back to her. It says a lot about how you felt about her. It says a lot about how you felt about that situation. She probably sat somewhere and stewed on it a little bit. You know how it is. Like if you ever lend people money and then you go to ask for your money back and they get mad at you for asking for your money back. It's the same thing when you quit and people, People don't know what they're going to do without you. They don't, you, you sending them scrambling, even though she gave her two weeks notice. I think she took it as short notice and you're leaving me. And, um, you know, so players also revealed after she went to clear up what, you know, the truth of the matter 
she also revealed that she had noticed that comments that were positive about her were eliminated while comments that were dragging her were allowed to stand and she and Monica would put them up on screen. Um, and then we saw where uh, Bishop comes out. Now, that's what I was waiting for. I was waiting for Bishop to come out and tell us uh, his side of it. I really, really wanted to hear from Bishop because like I said, Bishop has always been very consistent and he's always been a very even keeled individual, right? Very fi fair and unbiased. And um, he comes out and does a live like yesterday, Monday, it might've been Sunday. He did live, but I think it was Monday and he just told it all. He told about how schoolboy and them called schoolboy and Monica called him and tried to get him to drag plays. He told about how schoolboy was being, I mean, he just exposed schoolboy. The only person he held up to, to in high esteem was both plays and Marcella. And, um, I started to see other people pop up like Bishop quit, Bishop quit, the Bishop quit, you know, which by the way, Bishop's got a really great platform. I, the, his platform is set up really nicely, but again, he's a gamer too. Um, and then I saw where people, other people was going live and talking about Bishop quitting. And I was just looking at some of the chat. And people were saying he's kissing Marcella's behind and, and he's, he's faking the game. Yada, yada. It was just negative. I was like, God, Lee, you can't win around here. You cannot win, but you have to remember it's different. If it was just 10 people talking in a room, right? That's 10 different viewpoints. Well, we're talking about thousands. We're talking about eight to 10,000 people in, in folks chats. All of those people take back their opinions and their perspectives and their own agendas, people they like, they don't like, that type of thing. And it can wear on you. It can tear away at your self-esteem, especially if you're not a strong individual. You had John Yates and, and Heidi, who they fought over 90 Day Fiance stuff. I didn't really follow that, but I know they fought. Cause it went on with that whole Sherelle's world thing. They came on to defend Monica. They didn't really have a defense cause they didn't really know what was going on. And they kind of didn't want to get as involved in the conversation. They was kind of keeping it light, like light, light support. People were backing away from this whole Monica all about the T situation. So Bishop quit. Plez quit first. Then Bishop schoolboy comes on. I hear and he quits. And I also heard that Monica just decided to scrap the whole panel and get another panel. Monica has since gone MIA. No one has seen her come on and do a panel with new people. The old people obviously are out. Weird. DJ Sky, nothing. I don't watch Sherelle's world anymore. I wonder if they talking about it because Sherelle had a bone to pick with um, Monica. Because Monica spoke up on um, John Yates' side and she didn't have nothing to do with it. Plus, Monica also kind of scooped the panel idea from her. And um, instead of her being on Sherelle's panels, you know, coming in with special tea and stuff like that, her and Sherelle, she went and built her own panels. She did that off of Sherelle's idea. She did. I think she she took that idea from Sherelle. I think she was having a little bit of an issue with Sherelle. Now, Monica sounds like she's African-American. She might not be, but she sounds like a Sherelle is African-American. John Yates is Caucasian. So I had an issue with, um, with Monica on live coming at Sherelle, telling her that she feels like she was deceiving John by not telling her, telling him that Perry was her husband. I didn't like the way she did that. I didn't like the way Monica did that. But then she went on to build her daytime panel, which I liked, and then her evening panel, which was okay for a little while. And I thought, you know, maybe she just misspoke. Maybe she just missed up. But Sherelle never did really care for her after then. I don't know if she's talking about it now. Now, I just gave you all that background uh, because, one, I want you guys to know that I'm out here on these YouTube <laughs> streets. Uh, a lot of times I'm watching and listening cut and I'm busy. Um, it's difficult for me to do videos when I'm with my parents because my dad, as you guys know, has dementia. And so a lot of times when you're talking, he thinks you're talking to him. 
and um, you have to constantly stop stop and clear it up so that's why I don't do as many videos as I used to do because a lot of times I'm dealing with them but I used to listen a lot listen to a lot of panels I even got my dad listening sometimes he loves um, a beautiful soul who is uh, it's Tabitha now he likes to hear her political commentary and stuff and sometimes when I'm making his breakfast I'll put her on and we'll listen together um, but these other panels, um, it's difficult because um, there's a lot that goes on. There's a lot that goes on in the chat that can be considered aggressive, um, obsessive, um, uh, off-putting. The trolling is, is, is huge out here on YouTube. But my greater point in doing this video is it's all about character. Um, people say that Monica has blew up her brand. I don't think so. We've accepted, um, little Wayne telling us that he doesn't, he doesn't see racism. He doesn't know anything about racism. We've accepted, uh, Cardi B not being black, but calling herself black and using the N word and, and, you know, talking, um, you know, uh, in this particular way. I mean, we just accept all types of stuff. Now, if anything goes and you can't really have an opinion on it one way or another. Um, so, uh, I don't think she's gone permanently. Um, I've heard that she's got other channels out there. Uh, and I don't doubt that because I've seen a lot of people run her video footage and, and I've seen, I see those videos are all still up. They're all still popping on the feed. And if she had flagged those videos, they would have to pull those videos down. And, um, you're constantly seeing videos up. So why isn't she flagging those videos? I don't know, but it stands to reason that maybe she does have alternate channels out there. Um, I think the most honorable thing for her to do would be to come on and say I was wrong. What I should have done was call Plez back and the, I should have brought her to the group and all together we discussed the fact that she was leaving and squashed it and moved on, right? Uh, I think that would be in her best interest. I think it would get those subscribers that it left her back. Um, I think it would shut the mouths of people who say that she kind of orchestrated the whole situation. Um, but I think if she was a person of that ilk, she never would have let it played out. She would have said, girl, I did not. I am so sorry. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, before I go to sleep, let me text you and just let you know that I think it's better that we just part ways and you will make an announcement tomorrow if that's okay with you. If, let, let me call you in the morning. We discuss how we're going to do it, whatever, whatever. Um, if she was of the ilk to squash it. Um, to be apologetic, to clear her name, to come with some sort of hat in hand humility. She would have, she wouldn't have handled it the way she handled it in the first place. And that's my greater point. My greater point is how people treat you. Okay. How they behave towards you says a lot about who they are. And when you see that happening, um, even if you're a person that leads with a kind heart um, and good intentions, you still have to have, um, an art of war mindset where you make sure that your good can't be evil spoken of. I think a lot of the mistake that we make is that we take people at face value or we take jargon and language that sounds like, um, that sounds like, uh, people are copacetic. They're cool. They're Southern. Like we are, they're down to earth. Like we are, they're professional. Like we are, we take that stuff and we say, Oh, he sounds like he cool. He seemed like he's straight. And the fact of the matter is it, it's really about the coin. Again, just think about how much mo money she had to have been making. And you know, it was good money because those panels went from once a week to twice a week to I, like I said, if not five, four days a week, and they would be on there for a, a, a few hours, a few hours. She had to have been making a killing. She had to have been making a killing. I mean, she just, 
I don't know how much people, some people say she was making between 12 and $17,000. I don't know how true it is a month. That's good money, man. It's good money. Okay. But it all fell through her fingers because, um, she opted to tear players down as opposed to treat her with care as opposed to letting her go on. I would have kept that relationship with Plez because a lot of people liked her and you could have had her come in, fill in once a week. Although there was other things going on behind the scenes why Plez wanted to leave as well. She just led with the time constraints excuse. So I don't know that she would have stayed, but if your intentions are pure, you come with those pure um I won't say excuses but you you come trying to mediate the the situation um with pure with a pure heart and I think ultimately that showed us what Monica is ultimately that's what's going to hurt her brand is the fact that people are never ever going to forget how she did plays People are never, ever going to forget the fact that Bishop um, exposed her. People are never going to forget that. Never. Not saying she won't be back on top, but people are not going to forget that. They're not. They're not. Um, yeah, so that is, that's what I wanted you guys to get from it. It doesn't matter. Like, everything I told you was just to fill you in on the situation. But I really, really wanted to get that point across. All of this could have been avoided if she had to just call that girl back. And even if she didn't want her on there anymore, even if she decided she hated her now and felt like she was stabbing her in the back, just appeased her and eased her on out the door. You know what I'm saying? Don't let your good be evil spoken of. And don't let the devil make an open show of you, okay? Because... You trying to rally everybody against her, against players who meant you no harm, exposed you. Be careful. Be careful. Be careful out here on these panels. Be careful out here in these chats. This is serious. And not just in the beef sector. This is serious. I'm talking about serious. Where people look at you in the chat, go to your channel. They decide they don't like you. There are people that build whole attachments to individuals out here. Whole attachments. They dox their lives. They dox their family lives. Um, uh, it may not even be uh, at a place where they want to expose your hidden secrets. Some of them are doxing you to scam you. Some of them are doxing you to steal your identity. VPN privacy is very, very important if you're on YouTube. Very, very important. Right? Because the devil is busy. Okay? And he walks to and fro, seeking whom he may destroy. Don't forget it. Don't forget it. Be careful out here. We are living in, in a very wicked time. An extremely wicked time, you guys. And and everything looks great. Uh, listen, sidebar... John Yates and Sherelle's world, they were suing each other. They were at each other's throats. They were tearing each other down, still making money while doing it. Now they're back on a panel together. John is back on Sherelle's panel. And they had thousands upon thousands, people, thousands upon thousands of people warring at each other over their disagreement. YouTubers, people they don't know disagreement the subscribers were at war about it now he right back over there he right back over there i would be shocked if i saw bishop and players back on monica i'd be shocked if monica had accepted them back but i wouldn't be surprised nothing surprises me it's all there for us to see people are bored people are brazen people are bold Okay, now more than ever, we must be cautious. We must be careful. And it is uh, even more important now than it ever was before to move in silence.
Okay. All right. That's all I got for you, honeybees. Y'all tell me what you think. Put it down below. And until y'all follow this story, you follow Sherelle's world, Monica with all about the tea, uh, 90 day fiance, John Yates. What, what, what do you think? What do you think about all this? Are you watching it all play out? What do you think about just how quickly things went south and how intricate the manipulation and the deception was? Um, all behind money <laughs> and the love of it. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Okay. In 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 some measure of clout. Y'all tell me what you think. Put it down below. And until next time, honeybees. Mwah, mwah, mwah. I holla.